Kone, and welcome to St. John Baptist Church, located at 1397 Peniman Road. We welcome you in the house of the Lord. Can you say amen, church? Amen. 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 Now we're going for our prayer. Please pray with me. Father God in heaven, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we thank you for this opportunity to be blessed by you to be here this day. We thank you, Father God, for your mercy, your grace, your protection, your love, your understanding, your wisdom for us each and every day of our lives. We ask you, Lord God, to bless our nation, our state, our local leaders, bless our leaders of this church, Lord God, and even the leaders in the church in our community, that we do your will, we do what you seek us for us to do. We thank you, Father God, that you have given us strength even in the times of temptations and sorrows, that the Holy Spirit that's in us will guide us and root us and strengthen us. As we go forth this day, Lord God, we pray for the speaker today, Reverend Nicole Guns, who will be bringing the word that you have given her to bring. We thank you, Lord God, for her. And we give you all the praise and glory for all you have done. In Jesus' name, we ask thee. Amen and amen. Now, the announcements for today is condolences to the Allen and Mack family. With deep sadness, uh, we announce that the loss of Brother Vernon Allen. His um, homegoing service will be at Whiting Struner Home this Wednesday, the 19th at 11 a.m. Visitation will be prior to the service at 10 a.m. In addition, we mourn the family of Deacon David Mack, who lost another one of his family members. Sister Brandy Mack passed away unexpectedly and will be funeralized on January the 22nd at 12 noon. Uh, viewing will be uh, begin January 22nd, 11 a.m. Services will be entrusted to Hall Funeral Home in Gloucester, Virginia. Please reach out to Sister uh, Allen and Deacon Mack and each of their families during this time of bereavement. Another announcement from James City County, Williamsburg, York County, NAACP. We're calling on every York, James City, Williamsburg, NAACP members to contact your senators requesting they vote yes to protect the voting rights. They must vote to end the filibuster to protect democracy. NAACP Civic Engineering, um, I'm sorry, Engagement Committee. All right, this is our first day for the Daniels Fast. Our 21 day Daniel Fast begins after our morning worship service. Contact your area deacon or church clerk to have the packet um, emailed to you or you can arrange a time to meet with trustee or deacon at the church to pick one up. And now we will have a um, selection from our song and music ministry. Thank you. 
scripture. The scripture is coming from Matthew chapter 6, verse 30 to 33. Matthew chapter 6, 30 to 33. Now if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore, do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? But after all these things, the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you need of all these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all things, all of these things shall be added to you. Amen. Amen. Now, it's my opportunity to introduce the speaker, Reverend Nicole Patrice Guns, is a native of Richmond, Virginia. She is the youngest daughter of Dr. Jeffrey and Rosetta Guns, pastor and first lady of Second Calvary Baptist Church in Norfolk, Virginia, where they have served for over 30 years. She is the product of the Virginia Beach Public School System and earned a Bachelor's of Science degree in nursing from Hampton University. She has currently served as a nurse manager at a pediatric mental health facility. God has blessed Nicole with several ministry gifts. She uh, currently serves as the psalmist leading praise and worship week after week while music is her first love. The Lord has also given her several other ministry passions. Seeing the absence of her generation in the church the Lord gave Nicole a vision to begin the Catalyst Young Adult Ministry at Second Calvary. This ministry seeks to connect young adults to living in the living God as a uh, relevant way without changing the message of the gospel. Nicole also serves on the mission fields of Kenya and Nigeria alongside her father. She has also been blessed to lead groups to the Holy Land Nicole is very involved in the work of the Baptist denomination, serving both locally and nationally. She is currently serves on the teaching staff for the Sunday School Publishing uh, Board of the National Baptist Convention USA Incorporated. Nicole is a proud member of the Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. She was licensed to preach on February 27, 2016, and is currently pursuing the Master of Divinity degree from the Samuel DeWitt Proctor School of Theology, Virginia Union University. The Lord has been good to Nicole and she counts it as a privilege and an honor to serve him. Amen. After another selection from my music ministry, the next, the next voice you will hear will be from Reverend Nicole Patrice Guns. Thank you. 
the Lord, everybody. I bring you greetings. Um, unfortunately, I was unable to be with you all in person due to the snow blizzard catastrophe going on outside right now, but I'm truly honored to be with you all um, on this morning. My name is Reverend Nicole Guns, and I am bringing greetings from Second Calvary Baptist Church. Thank you again for allowing me to share for these few moments that are ours. I will be coming from Judges chapter 2, verses 6 through 14. Judges chapter 2, verses 6 through 14. And I will be reading from the New Revised Standard Version. Judges chapter 2, verses 6 through 14, from the New Revised Standard Version. And it reads, when Joshua dismissed the people, 
the Israelites all went to their own inheritances to take possession of the land. The people worshiped the Lord all the days of Joshua and all the days of the elders who outlived Joshua, who had seen all the great work that the Lord had done for Israel. Joshua, son of Nun, the servant of the Lord, died at the age of 110 years. So they buried him within the bounds of his inheritance in timnath Harez, and the hill country of Ephraim, north of Mount Gash. Moreover, the whole generation was gathered to their ancestors, and another generation grew up after them who did not know the Lord or the work that he had done for Israel. God, in the name of Jesus, I ask that you would anoint me afresh for this moment. God, let your people hear from you and not from me. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh. In Jesus' name, amen. So my message this morning is entitled, The Dangers in Forgetting God. The Danger in Forgetting God. So this weekend, tomorrow, we will celebrate the birthday of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And as I think about his birthday, I'm reminded of the rich legacy and tradition of our historically Black institutions in America. See, it was in the Black church at Second Calvary where I learned as a child all three verses of Lift Every Voice and Sing. And it was my parents who taught me the importance of HBCUs, schools like Virginia Union and Hampton University and Howard and Norfolk State and the importance and the contributions that our schools have made to society. I'm grateful for those who taught me along the way, who passed along the traditions of the elders. My parents would often sit my sister and me down and we would have discussions about the civil rights movement and Jim Crow laws and the importance of the Emancipation Proclamation. If it had not been for my church and my family, I would have never heard about Medgar Evers and Dr. Betty Shabazz, Marcus Garvey. I would have never been exposed to the musical stylings of Ella Fitzgerald or the beauty of Dorothy Dandridge or the finesse that dripped from Harry Belafonte and Sidney Poitier or the brilliant minds of my sorors, Dr. Mary McLeod Bethune, or Dr. Dorothy Irene Height. And it was on the campus of Hampton University where I learned about the magnitude of the diaspora of our people, that we come from a rich legacy that did not begin in 1619 when we arrived in America, but that we are the legacy, we are the descendants of kings and queens and warriors and inventors and scientists, that it was from around the world people would come to Timbuktu to study in the library. I would not have known those things if they weren't passed down to me from those who went before me. And you know, one of the things that we have not always done a good job of in our community is telling our story. We've allowed others to rewrite our story and, and call it all kinds of things and, and even villainize it and, and say that it's not that it's not good, that it's that our story is not a good story to share. There are even politicians who base their whole campaigns on negating our story. But there's power in knowing where you come from. There's power in knowing your story. How will a generation of young people ever know who we are if we don't know the story of our parents and our grandparents and our great grandparents? I recently found out from my 94 year old grandfather that my family has roots in the Geechee. I, I would have never known that if he had not shared that with me. How will we ever know if no one shares the story? We will never fully appreciate who we are and how we've overcome and how we survived the middle passage and the auction block and, and slavery and germ crow laws and the war on drugs if no one ever shares our story. You know, and we can't tell our story without giving God praise and acknowledging for how God, for how far God has brought us. 
we haven't arrived yet, but God has been good to us as a people. When we think about how our foremothers and our forefathers were brought to this country in shackles and had to endure behaviors and lifestyle that was unthinkable, we survived that. We survived to see many major accomplishments, even the first black president and the first black madam president, vice president. God has been good to us. We have a story in America. You know, and, and we can't forget the, the slayings of Emmett Till and Trayvon Martin. We, we can't forget the story of those who have gone before us. We can't forget Shirley Chisholm and Elijah Cummings. and We can't forget Ruby Dee. We can't forget Rosa Parks. We can't forget Dr. King. We can't forget those who have come before us. We can't forget our story. And in our text this morning, Joshua, the great leader, I'm going somewhere, I promise I am. In our text, Joshua, the great leader of Israel, had served under Moses, and, and Joshua had now died. He, at the age of 110 years old, Joshua died. And all of those who had lived under Joshua's leadership continued to serve the Lord and, as they were taught under Joshua. If you remember Moses, when the children of Israel came out of, uh, out of Egypt, Moses was in Mount, Moses went to Mount Sinai. He was on the mountain and God gave him the 10 commandments and God gave him the law and made a conditional covenant with the children of Israel that as long as they were obedient to God, as long as they followed the book of the law, as long as they did the things that God told them to do, as long as they kept God first, God would be with them. God would give them success in everything they did. God would allow them to defeat their enemies as long as they followed the commands given by God at Mount Sinai. But see, at the time of Joshua's death, the children of Israel had now entered the promised land. They had entered the promised land, but the Canaanites were still there. And so there was another group they had to defeat. They had to defeat the Canaanites. So they were in the land of promise, right? But they had not fully inhabited their promise. They had not fully received the promise because the Canaanites were still in the land. And so the Canaanites were people who had worship practices that were that were contrary to what God um required of the children of Israel. So the Canaanites sacrificed their children. The Canaanites um, had worship practices that were unacceptable, that were an abomination to God. And so the children of Israel began to take on the, the worship and began to take on the behaviors of the Canaanites. And so somewhere between God giving Moses the covenant at Mount Sinai to Judges chapter two, something changed in there. The children of Israel forgot the covenant that they made with God. They forgot what God had instructed them to do. There is danger in forgetting God. Let's look at Judges chapter two, beginning at verse 10. And it says from the Holy Christian Standard Bible, after them, another generation rose up who did not know the Lord or the works that God had done for Israel. The Israelites did what was evil in the Lord's sight. It says they worshiped the Baals and abandoned the Lord, the God of their fathers who had brought them out of Egypt. They went after other gods from the surrounding peoples and bowed down to them. They infuriated the Lord. They infuriated the Lord for they abandoned him and worshiped the Baal and the Asterisk. The Lord's anger burned against Israel and he handed them over to the marauders who raided them. He sold them to the enemies and they suffered greatly. This is the God who kept them in the wilderness. This is the God who brought them out of Egypt and brought them through the Red Sea. This is the God who provided water and food in the wilderness. This is the God who gave God's own presence to be a cloud during the day and a fire by night. This is the same God that provided manna from heaven. This is the same God that allowed, that, that did not let their shoes or their clothes wear out in 40 years. This is that God and they abandoned him, they forgot God. So what is the danger in forgetting God, lest I hold you too long? First, when we forget God, we began to worship false gods. When we forget God, we began to worship 
false gods. Verse 11 says, then the sons of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord and they served the Baals and forsook the Lord. They forsook God, or as the message Bible says, they deserted God. They deserted God, the God who had brought them out of slavery and through the wilderness and allowed them to defeat their enemies. Their enemies, they forgot about him. How many of you know people who are super spiritual and close to God when they're broke, when they need something, when, uh, when, when they need help, when they find themselves in situations, they're praying, they're fasting, they're seeking the Lord, they're, they're participating in the church-wide fast, they're at Bible study, they're, they're doing everything that, that they feel is the right thing to do when things aren't going well in their lives, but as soon as they enter into their promise, as soon as as things start to turn around, as soon as things start to shift in their lives, they forget about God. They forget about the God who kept them and, and allowed them to, to provide for their children when they didn't have money in the bank. They forget the God who helped them to pay their rent when they couldn't figure out how it was going to work out. They forget the God who gave them favor on their jobs. They forget God. How many of you know people like that? And the reality is we've all been that way. They forgot about God. They forgot about God. And you may say to me, listen, Reverend Nicole, I don't, I don't worship Baal. I don't worship the asterisk. I don't, I don't sacrifice my children. I don't, I don't do these things. I don't worship false gods. Well, listen, the reality is whatever we put before God becomes an idol. I'm going to say that again for the people in the back of your house listening. Whatever we put before God becomes an idol. It's not wrong to want to obtain wealth. It's not wrong to want to do well for yourself. It's not wrong to enjoy life, but it's wrong when we put it before God. Anything that we put before God becomes an idol. Maybe for you, it's your success. Maybe it's your car, maybe your job, maybe your idol is your significant other or your title or your church money or, or your money. Whatever it is that becomes more important to you than God becomes an idol. Maybe the degrees hanging on your wall have become your idols. Whatever we put before God is an idol. And the thing that I'm learning as I get older is that it's so easy to put things and put life ahead of God. It's so easy to get busy making everything else a priority. It's so easy to get busy trying to achieve your accomplishments. It's so easy to get caught up in all of these things. And before we know it, if we are not careful, we would have drifted so far away from God and not even realize it. We must be careful not to forget God because we don't want to put other gods before him. We cannot forget God. We don't want to become, to go into idolatry. So first, we don't want to forget God because it's easy to begin to serve false gods. But secondly, when we forget God, we become susceptible to our enemies. When we forget God, we become susceptible to our enemies. What does susceptible mean? Susceptible means least that it's likely to be influenced or harmed by something. Here's the thing. COVID-19 is not susceptible to antibiotics because it's a virus. So, so th that's, why, that's why it's so difficult for us to get control over the virus because it is not susceptible to, to medications. It's not susceptible to antibiotics. So, so susceptible means likely to be influenced or harmed by something else. So verse 14, the Lord's anger burned against Israel and he handed them over to marauders who raided them. He sold them to the enemies around them and they could no longer resist their enemies. The word of God says they could no longer resist their enemies. And listen, the children of Israel, when they came out of Egypt, they were not warriors. They were not, they were not warriors they were they were a nation they were a young nation of 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 farmers and they had been slaves they were not warriors but yet god gave them victory over their enemies god gave them victory in situations that they were not qualified for god gave them victory over their enemies god even when they were outnumbered god gave them victory over their enemies god allowed them to win battles that they were did not deserve to win god 
God allowed them to win battles that the odds were against them. God allowed them to win battles when it looked impossible. God allowed them to win battles that they should not have won. It's like you or me going up against Floyd Mayweather or Mike Tyson. We are not qualified. We don't have the skill set. We're not strong enough to defeat Floyd Mayweather or uh, Mike Tyson, but, but it's like God giving us victory anyway. That's what God did for the children of Israel. Time and time and time and time again, they were able to defeat their enemies, but they deserted God. And so now, now it says, now it says that they could no longer <laughs> resist their enemies. They could no longer resist their enemies. They won battles that they did not deserve to win. Without God, the people were now as susceptible or vulnerable to their enemies. Listen, the reality is that we as a people could not have survived the Middle Passage, the, the transatlantic slave trade, the civil rights movement, the passage of laws, the the war on drugs, uh, police brutality. We could not survive these things without God on our side. I remember my grandmother saying many times in church, if it had not been for the Lord, on my side. I don't know where I would be. Listen, it's the God of, of the Bible. It's the God of our ancestors that keeps us. It's our God who has kept us in times when it looked like the odds are, have been against us, when it seemed like, like there was no solution to our problems. God has been the one that has kept us. I know I'm not preaching to myself. I know there's somebody out there that God has been a battle ax in the time of trouble for you that when it looked impossible, God stepped in and fought your battles for you. We are where we are. We are who we are because of God. But they forgot God. So they were now susceptible to their enemies. They were now susceptible to our enemy, to their enemies. You know, and there are people who would like to say that the God of the Bible is not the God of our ancestors. That's what they, that's what they like to say. They like to say that the God of the Bible is, is, is um, the God of the slave masters. But historical evidence proves that before the gospel was ever preached or taught in Europe, it was taught on the continent of Africa. It was on the continent of Africa. Historical evidence it shows that one of the oldest churches in existence to this day is an Ethiopian church right by uh right in Jerusalem the god of the bible is the god of our ancestors that's the God who gave them the wisdom to build the pyramids, the God who gave them the strength to survive the Middle Passage. That is the God of our ancestors. The African church father, Polycarp, once said, the more you mow us down, the more we grow. We are who we are because of God. When we forget God, we become susceptible to our enemies. And I know there may be somebody listening today who feels like giving up and, and feels like what you're facing and what you're dealing with is just too much. It's been too hard over these last 20 some months. You've been trying to figure things out and it's just, it's just been too much. The weight has been too much for you to bear. I want to encourage you to remember the Lord your God. Remember the God who kept your mother and your grandmother and your great grandmother. Remember God. Because God is able to keep you and God is able to give you victory in every situation. I know the God who can be both the doctor and the lawyer and the judge and the jury. I know the God who is able to keep us from falling. I know the God who has been my protector, my provider, my strong tower. I know the God who's kept me in perfect peace when I should have lost my mind. I know God. You can't forget God. So, so danger in forgetting God first. And when we forget God, we are, um, we are likely to fall into idolatry. Secondly, when we forget God, we become susceptible to our enemies. And lastly, when we forget God, we are at risk of repeating cycles of failure. When we forget God, we are at risk of repeating cycles of failure. 
See, see what happened was the children of Israel would find themselves in these situations. They would find themselves in a situation because they were now susceptible to their enemies. So they would cry out to the Lord, 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 God, if you just get us out of this, God, help us. If you help us, God, we promise we will worship you. We will serve you for the rest of our lives. And so then God would raise up a judge and the judge would help to deliver them out of their situation. And then as soon as they were delivered, they would fall right back into the idolatry, um, right back into idolatry. And so then they would become susceptible to their enemies again. And then they say, God, if you get us out of this, we promise that we will serve you for the rest of our lives. And so then God would raise up another judge and then the judge would help to deliver them from their enemies. And then as soon as they got out of that situation, they went back into their lifestyle of idolatry and then they would become susceptible to their enemies and then they would say god if you get us out of this god we promise to worship you and serve you all the days of our lives god would raise up a judge you see where i'm going with this and this just kept going on and on and on that that they said god if you do this God, we're promised to never find ourselves in this situation again. Listen, I know we have all done that. God, if you get me out of this one, I promise I will start logging on for 6 a.m. prayer. God, if you get me out of this one, I promise I will give to the angel tree ministry. God, if you get me out of this one, I promise I will be faithful to my wife. I'll be faithful to my husband. God, if you get me out of this. I promise I will go to work on time and I will be the best employee. God, if you get me out of this, I promise that I will be, I will tithe. I will do all that you tell me to do. God, if you get me out of this, I promise I will read my Bible every day. God, if you get me out of this, I promise that I will be the best Christian that you ever, you won't find a Christian better than me. I'm, I will be the one. I know I got a witness, right? And so what happened and, and what can happen when we forget God, we can find ourselves repeating cycles of failure. We must remember our story and we must remember God so that we don't repeat the same vicious cycle. So many of our people live in cycles of poverty, cycles of, of no education. We must break the cycle of the school to prison pipeline and mass incarceration. We must break the cycle of violence in our neighborhoods. We must break the cycle, <laughs> and, and, and here we go, of voter suppression. We're seeing that right before our eyes right now, that it looks like the 1960s all over again. We must break the cycle of low voter turnout. We must break the cycle of unemployment in our communities. We must break the cycle of police brutality. We must break the cycle of unjust laws and policies. We've got to break the cycles. One of the things that I think we, that I believe happened to us as a people is that after the desegregation of schools and the amendments of laws and the declaration of Dr. King's birth, Day, we as a people thought that the fight was over. And so we stopped sharing the story of how we got over. We became comfortable. We started living in the suburbs. We we became comfortable and we didn't tell our children that, that they didn't just end up middle class, that it took some work to get to where they are. We became comfortable. And so, and we fell away from the things that kept us. We fell away from the traditions of our ancestors. We fell away from telling how big mama had to go and, 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 and pick cotton. We stopped telling that story because that story for some of us became a source of embarrassment that we came from that. We, we didn't tell our children that we grew up in the hood, that we grew up in the projects. We didn't want to tell our children that anymore. And so we became comfortable in this life and we saw that we had arrived. Remember the children of Israel had entered into the promised land and they got comfortable, but the battles weren't even over yet. They still had to defeat the Canaanites. We became comfortable with what had been accomplished. But then Ferguson happened in Baltimore and St. Louis and the deaths of Freddie Gray and, and Michael Brown and Eric Garner and, and Philander Castile. And, 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 and these reminded us that the battle, that the fight for civil rights, not just for us, but for everybody had not ended. Listen, I wanna tell you 
that we've got to continue the fight. We've got to continue the work. We've got to continue the legacy. We've got to continue to share the story. We've got to continue and the, the, the what has kept us as a people. We've got to continue in those things. We've got to know the history. We, I know they're trying to call it all kinds of things. You can call it critical race theory. You can call it whatever you want. That's the story of our people. And, and, and here's the thing. I grew up in Virginia Beach. And so they weren't teaching that in Virginia Beach. They didn't teach that, that it, growing up in Virginia Beach, that just down the road, thousands of millions of, uh, of, of Africans came into this country just up the road. They, they didn't tell us that at Yorktown Beach, uh, millions of Africans came into America through Yorktown. They didn't teach us that story. They didn't teach us that Hampton University was founded because a, 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 a union general uh, Found, saw all these slaves running to uh, to Fort Monroe for safety. And so he started to teach them. They didn't teach us that history. They didn't teach us that at Hampton, the very first black people to come into America came in through the beach at Hampton. They didn't teach us that. Right up the road, right up the road. We have to tell our story. We have to tell our story. We have to know our history. Listen, if nobody else teaches our history, we should teach our history. If the school never teaches our history, we should teach our history so that we don't create the same cycle so that we don't set up future generations for failure. And this is not, and, and I hope that this message hasn't made anybody uncomfortable, but I'm just, I'm just preaching what's in the Bible. I'm preaching what's in the text, that there are so many parallels there between us and the children of Israel. We've got to know our story. And then once we have arrived, once God has blessed us, once God has allowed us to go into the land of promise, we can't forget those who are still trying to get there. We can't forget those who are still trying to, to who are still fighting for their lives. We can't forget those who are still, who are, who look like us. And even those who don't look like us, who are still fighting for equality. Sean Carter once said that no one wins when the family feuds, my family, we are the family of God. We are the descendants of Mother Africa. We must stand up and remember our story. We've got to tell our story about how God saved us one day, how God made a way out of no way, how God kept us when things were falling apart. We've got to tell our story that over 2,000 years ago, God saw an oppressed people, a disenfranchised people, a rejected people, and realized that we needed a remedy. And and that remedy came through 42 generations, was baptized in the river by John, that he walked the earth misunderstood by his family and rejected by his friends. That remedy from God was arrested one Thursday night in an olive garden, and, and they beat him all night long, and they, they put a crown of thorns on his head, and, and they put nails in his hands and nails in his feet. That remedy, that solution for our situation came through Jesus Christ. He died so that the good news would be proclaimed to the poor. He died so that the captives would be released. He died so that the blind would see again and the oppressed would be free. He died for you and for me. We've got to continue, not just the legacy of our ancestors, but we've got to continue the fight that Jesus Christ mandated to us as he left this earth. We've got to tell our story. We've got to tell about what God has done for us. And we've got to continue the fight. God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, thou who has brought us thus far on the way, thou who has by thy might led us into the light, keep us forever in the path, we pray. We've got to tell our story, how God raised Jesus up and gave him a name above every name that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. Let me pray for you. God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you that you have allowed us to be together today, Lord. God, we thank you for all of the many blessings and all of the things that you have done for us, God, individually and as a people, God. May we never forget 
what you've done for us. May we never forget how you've kept us. May we never forget what you've done for us. God, you said in your word not to forget your benefits. God, so, so there may be somebody listening today, and I'm sure all of us have been in this place where we get busy and we forget about you. God, we submit ourselves to you again. God, consecrate us for your service. God, and as you, as you continue to bless us, may we not forget those who have still not entered into the land of promise. And may we never get so comfortable in what we've attained that we forget that it was you that did it. God, I pray for anybody listening today that doesn't know you. God, I pray that you would prick their hearts, Lord, that they would come to know you in the name of Jesus. We pray, amen. If you're listening to this message, and maybe you don't know this God that I just preached about, maybe you don't know about Jesus, I would invite you to give your life to him. Because the reality is life is hard, and, and God never promised that, that life would be easy. But God did promise to be with us. It's never too early to give your life to the Lord, but it can one day be too late. So if that's you, just put in the chat that this is me, this is me, I'm the one, and someone will reach out to you. Thank you for having me today. I pray that God blesses you and keeps you um, and that you have a wonderful week this week. Let us pray, God, in the name of Jesus. Pray that you would keep us as we go from your presence, God, virtually and in person. Um, now unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all we could ever ask or think to the only wise God, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forevermore. Let the people of God say, amen. God bless you.